Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we get turned into pavements. <laughs> because this week we watched Love and Monsters. By Russell T. Directed by Dan Zeff, <laughs> a new director <laughs> into the fold. And air on <coughs> June 17th, 2006. Kind of sucks that Mr. Zeff was given this episode as his... <laughs> Debut directorial effort on the show. Yeah, he did the best he could with it. He did uh, uh, did he really? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> did he really? Especially though? those scenes with the absorber log <laughs> running through the streets at the end. <laughs> or absorber law for. Yeah, absorber law. The absorber law was designed by a kid for a, a competition they had on Blue Peter. They're like, design a Doctor Who monster. And and apparently the absorber off <laughs> was the one that the show picked as the winner. I'd hate to see the you know the ones that didn't win. You know how because this one was pretty uh, <laughs> not very good. Well, apparently the absorber off was supposed to be the size of a building, but due to budgetary <laughs> constraints, they had to tweak the design a little bit for the show. Yeah, that's why that's why you always keep budget in mind when you're uh, designing these things. You know, you don't just. Uh, go ham with it and then go like oh wait we don't have the budget for any of this <laughs> well so it begins it begins with a guy just like running up to the TARDIS <laughs> okay. and being like whoa TARDIS this is one of the strangest beginnings to any episode of Doctor Who ever I think because it it almost seems like it, it starts like in the middle of the action you know whatever but it almost seems like it starts in the middle of the the music too <laughs> sort of just throws you in and I just went wait a minute did I did I just skip like 20 seconds into the episode? But no, it was it was actually just the beginning. Well, I mean, this is just one of the strangest episodes of Doctor <laughs> Who that's ever been a- attempted <laughs> on the show. And I'll give them credit for attempting it, I, I guess. That's yeah, really all you can give them credit for with this. <laughs> pretty, pretty bad final product they churned out. <laughs> They're like trying to show... The Doctor's adventures from, like, a random bystander. Yeah, one of the things that the reboot has really been doing is trying to show the Doctor's effects on the everyday person. And, and this one just, just went all out with it. And, and, and just uh, followed a completely <laughs> ordinary person. <laughs> I don't even remember his name. That's how completely... <laughs> bo- yeah. Oh, it's Elton. I remember now because they made a lot of Elton John quote-unquote <laughs> jokes. <laughs> but yeah, so he, like, runs up to the TARDIS like, whoa, TARDIS... And then you hear, you just hear like really poorly overdubbed lines from the Doctor and Rose. And the Doctor's like, come on, Rose, hurry up. And Rose is like, I'm trying, I'm trying. Maybe they were just pulled from earlier episodes. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, given how the Doctor and Rose are only in like five minutes of this. Yeah, so the guy like runs into the building and he sees the Doctor trying to fend off this beastie he, looking thing. He opens a door and you see a... a an alien. Yeah, and the moment I knew uh, we were in for a real big treat was the moment they actually did the exact Scooby-Doo thing. <laughs> yeah. Where they're running across in front of the camera between the doors, and the monster's chasing them, and then they're chasing the monster, and then they're, like, running out of doors that they didn't go in. It's, it's the actual Scooby-Doo thing. I know we make a lot of references to the Scooby-Doo thing on this show, but this, yeah. this is the yeah, this Scooby-Doo is the thing. First time it's been the actual Scooby-Doo thing, yeah. Just play the Benny Hill theme over this. They they honestly could have, and it wouldn't have even felt out of place, uh, like at all. <laughs> anyway, this monster that they encounter has a really cool design, much better than the absorbable off. Yeah, and he's only in it for like two minutes, <laughs> legitimately. Rose runs up with like a bucket of water? Butter of something that it's... Bo- bucket, <laughs> not butter, or mm, bottle. Butter of something. <laughs> Bo- bucket of something that it's uh, weak to, I guess. Except she wasn't supposed to use a blue bucket because that makes the monster angry. So then they they run around and do the Scooby Doo thing, and then Rose finds a red bucket, and then hard cuts to Elton to sitting in yeah sitting in front of his camera, going, "And that's how I met the Doctor." <laughs> Cue title sequence because the Doctor stops and turns to Elton. He's like, "Don't I know you from somewhere?" Yeah. So yeah. a really really weird start to the episode. Really sets the tone for the rest of the episode, to be honest. Yeah, just sort of a strange and uh, almost surreal experience that is, just isn't very enjoyable or fun to watch in any way. The rest of the episode's pretty <laughs> surreal, too. I mean, I was just watching it going, oh my god, how did this make it to the screen? Because it's just so bizarre. 
It's just so bizarre. But anyway, so then the episode actually starts and the guy's like, my name's Elton. Not like hard cuts <laughs> to Elton John. Yeah, yeah, the first thing you think is, uh, oh, I guess they uh, named him after Elton John. I'm sure they're not actually going to uh, bring that into the story in any way, though, you know, whatever. And it goes, not to be confused with, and then a two-second clip of Elton John playing the piano. And then back to Elton in front of the camera, and he's like, yeah, so anyway, that wasn't the first time I met the Doctor. I just put that there because, you know, got to start in the middle because this is the most <laughs> exciting bit. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're breaking the fourth <laughs> wall here. And he's like, no, I actually first met the Doctor when I was a kid. And then it, like, cuts to Ursula filming Elton <laughs> in front of his childhood home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think there's going to be some twist with Ursula because they don't show her on on camera. You know, she's recording. Mm-hmm. And I guess there is, but I mean, I don't really see how how that's her at the end, you know, filming with what happens at the end. But, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, because you see her hands at the beginning of the, yeah. uh, he goes, that's Ursula, my, uh, my camera person. And you see her hand, like, stick in front of the camera. Yeah. I wonder how that happened, based on the ending of this. Well, maybe they filmed that part before the Absorbaloff revealed himself. Yeah, I, I guess guess that's the only viable explanation. Anyway, now Elton goes on to explain how... He met the doctor when he was uh, just a wee little kid. When he was just a wee lad. Kind of like um, the story we read for the Christmas special, almost. Yeah, except that was way better than yeah, this. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and that wasn't even anything to, uh, to write home about, so... Yeah, that was just like an inconsequential fluff piece. <laughs> this was like an actual episode of the television show. But anyway, we get some first-person shots of uh, apparently Elton as a as a kid encountering the Doctor. Apparently, the Tenth Doctor just likes to sneak into people's homes. <laughs> Master criminal Tenth Doctor. <laughs> but yeah, he he encountered the Doctor as a kid, and he uh, doesn't really remember the uh, situation that much. So mm-hmm. he's, I guess, in joining this conspiracy theory group that we're gonna get to in a minute. Uh, yeah. Also trying to recover his his memories that he suppressed. Well, first he explain some of the weird events that he encountered he saw the shop mannequins come to life in rows he saw the spaceship crash into big ben and aliens of london yeah and all things you would have seen if you uh you know lived, lived in, in london, london. <laughs> the story also later on implies that rose actually lives in london and not yeah she she always lived in, no she always lived in london they just went to Cardiff for that one story. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's always been London. Yikes. So, yeah, so Elton's like, yeah, so I saw all these things. Apparently, Russell T said there was going to be more references to, like, classic Who events, like the Shore Ditch incident, which was the, the do- resurrection of the Daleks, or Revelation, or whatever the Seventh Doctor one was. Wow, that memorable term for it, the Shore Ditch incident. <laughs> <clears throat> And some other things, but yeah, they didn't make it into the episode, thankfully, (laughs) question mark. But yeah, so Elton does the reasonable thing that people who have seen aliens do, which is joins a conspiracy group. Well, first he first he joins a a, a website or forum, I guess. Maybe it's Craig's (laughs) from Rose. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. Well, this does take place a couple years after Rose and. Craig uh, bit the dust, but uh, maybe his site lives on. <laughs> maybe someone else continued it for him. Yeah, we'll never know. So He joins up with this group, later named Linda. <laughs> well, we'll get there, but there's... So the people in the group are Bliss, who it doesn't even matter. She's, <laughs> she's like an artist. Mr. Skinner, he's, who I, also really doesn't matter. He's <laughs> writing a novel. I don't it. really know what he... Yeah, he's writing, he's writing a, novel. a novel. That's his only defining feature. Is Bridget? She just cooks. She travels from really far away. Oh yeah, to get she's to the from meeting. from the north. She takes the train like every Tuesday or whatever to get to the meeting. There's, and there's Ursula. Ursula. I don't know who she is. She's, she's just kind of there. Also, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's half of the title. You know, love and monsters. She was the love interest, and in the absorb love was the monster. I mean, that's honestly probably what it is. I mean, I know you're probably making a joke, but... Uh, yeah, no, that's... that is what it is. 
so apparently the meetings got further and further away from being about the doctor and became like an actual just a social club which you know it's nice to have just a social club to go to every tuesday apparently elton is like obsessed with electric light orchestra yeah yeah which i mean they're a pretty good band but elton takes it too far i think dancing to one of their songs alone is taking it too far well, he also drags the entire group into forming a band oh, yeah. just so they can sing ELO songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. When he finds out that Bliss can play the piano, he's like, we're going to make a band. And then he seems to be the only one who can't play an instrument. So he sings really poorly. <laughs> just goes to show you how unmemorable an episode and how unmemorable a character Elton is. When you no, can't I, even I remember. think the story is pretty memorable, if only for the fact that it's just so weird. There were some... There, okay, there were actually a couple f- really funny things that actually made me laugh out loud, and Doctor Who rarely ever makes me laugh audibly, but this episode did in, like, two instances, and we'll get there. <laughs> I really hope one of them is the end. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so they were just... You know, they're just having a good time. Apparently Bridget cooks and bakes. They, like, just... They barely talk about the Doctor now. They just have fun... But then it all yeah, probably, goes to pot. <laughs> I mean, probably for the best that they're this conspiracy-themed group, you know, sort of uh, gives up before they uh, go crazy like Craig. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it all uh, falls apart when a uh, guy whose name I forgot shows Victor up. Kennedy. Oh, yeah. Victor Kennedy. The actor who plays Victor Kennedy does a pretty good job, which kind of sucks for him that he's doing such a good job and... In, an episode that's like kind of bad. Yeah, I forgot to mention the the woman who plays Ursula. I think is the same actress who plays the girl in Harry Potter in the Chamber of Secrets. Who like is in oh, the, the ghost? Myrtle? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's her. And if it's not, her voice sounds exactly the same. Well, let's just find out. Yeah, you're right. She appeared as Moaning Myrtle in several Harry Potter films. She also appeared in Train Spotting. Huh. So weird. I'm amazed that you even recognized. I wouldn't have recognized her if her voice didn't sound so similar. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's impressive, actually. Anyway, yeah, Victor Kennedy does, like, a really good job right up until he turns into the absorber off. Then it also (laughs) goes to pot, but, you know, whatever. Well, I mean... Oh, you mean his acting? I thought you meant his ability as, like, the leader of the group. No, I mean, that too, but... (laughs) Not really. I mean, he kind of uh, absorbs the other members. Yeah, but just, they they just kind of all just rebel against him, so even when they're absorbed. It leads to their deaths. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but... Anyway, the members start disappearing one by one, and the rest of the group is kind of just like, well, that's pretty suspicious, but then they kind of just write it off as like, guess they just disliked the dec- declining quality of our group and just sort of buzz it off without telling us. Yeah, they, <laughs> the group meets in like... The basement of a building, <laughs> some some condemned building, and when Victor Kennedy shows up, they just turn the basement into like a proper like classroom office type thing. Oh, I forgot to mention the scene where they name it Linda, the London Investigation and Detective Agency. <laughs> you got to emphasize the mm more. <laughs> London Investigation mm Detective Agency, <laughs> and everyone's like mm, and she's like e-. he's like yeah, like fish mm, chips. And they're like, ah. roll. Yeah. And Ursula's like, did you come up with that on the spot? And he's just like, no, I've always wanted to use it. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> After we finished recording last week, <laughs> Keon made a reference that Victor Kennedy reminded him of the master in the in the scenes from the next episode because it seemed like Victor Kennedy knew a lot about the Doctor and Wanted to destroy him for no reason. And I was thinking while I was watching this, like, wow, this story would be way better if they just removed the absorber off and actually just made Victor Kennedy the master. But they didn't, so now he was dwelling on things they didn't do. You know, I'm actually glad they didn't bring the master back in this, because it would be kind of lame to bring the master back for the reboot in such a lame story. I mean, yeah, it would. I'm just It would make the story a lot better, so maybe it wouldn't be as lame. But it would still have all this dumb Elton stuff and the blog. Sorry, it's actually a vlog, not a blog stuff. Whatever. (laughs) What's the difference, really? Victor Kennedy stolen the Torchwood files on the Doctor, too. We forgot to mention that. Don't know how he did that. (laughs) Yeah, the Absorbalove 
or absorb a loft. I, I honestly didn't know if it was a lav or loft. It's off with an F. <laughs> All right. Uh, sounds actually kind of uh, Russian there, but uh, yeah, he seemed pretty weak and underwhelming. I mean, when he reveals himself, he seems pretty powerful, just completely useless at using his powers. As long as you can avoid him, you're good. He seems pretty slow, and uh, yeah, as long as you can just avoid him. I mean, he touch. seems pretty quick, actually, when he jumps over the desk. Nah, the scenes where he's running were, were pretty terrible. It made him seem, honestly, really slow. Well... Anyway, yeah, he he asks, like, Bliss to stay after the first meeting, and she just never shows up again. So that's goodbye to Bliss. Elton helps write it off by saying, like, our uh, meeting, quality, meeting quality is declining. Bliss even left without even saying anything. Just goes to show you how awful our group is getting. Yeah, well, so Victor Kennedy apparently teaches them how to, to engage... With targets, and now he's like, we well, if, uh, well, so he, yeah, Kennedy sort of steps up their um, their uh, investigation of the doctor. Yeah, and then this is when the scene from the beginning of the episode occurs, when Elton runs into the doctor and that monster thing, and then Kennedy's like, "You're an idiot! Why didn't you engage? We, now you've let them get away." And then Kennedy's like, "We'll just change our approach. Let's just look for his companion." Because she... Because we have this picture of Rose. Yeah. And then Elton's... How did they get that picture of Rose? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Kennedy's <laughs> just been stalking Rose. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> then Elton has this long thing about how difficult it was going to be to find Rose in this massive <laughs> city with a population of like a million. Like, how a would million, anybody... A million, yeah. London's population is a lot more than a million. I mean, yeah. A lot more than a million. And he's just like... How are we ever going to find her? And then just the first person he talks to is like, oh yeah, that's Rose Tyler. Her mom right is Jackie there. Tyler. She lives like right over there, like around the corner. <laughs> and Elton just looks super surprised. He's like, what? This is one of the two funny scenes in this that I actually thought were legitimately funny and a good addition to the story. The other one's coming up soon and it involves Jackie. Yeah, Elton goes off to uh, Rose's apartment right now and encounters Jackie. Yeah, she's like washing her clothes and then Elton's like talking about the four steps yeah. To, to surveillance, I guess. Yeah, follows and in, follows her into a laundromat, and he's like, "There's all right. There's four steps with engaging with your target. One, find a way to like just make small talk or something." And then Jackie's just like, "Hey, do you have a coin?" <laughs> and he's like, uh, 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 "Yeah." I think she asks for change or something. And he's like, "Uh, yeah." Step two was uh, get on a first name basis without seeming suspicious. And Jackie's like, I'm Jackie, what's your name? And he's like, uh, Elton? <laughs> and she's like, oh, you don't meet a lot of Eltons except for, well, the obvious one. I'm like, ah. And then, like, step three was, I don't know. Something that Jackie also initiates. Engage yourself in their personal life or something. Then step Always four. Always make, make a joke. And uh, the joke, the quote-unquote joke was Jackie was like, first day I've met you and I've already, I'm already flashing you my Knickers. Knickers. So funny. And then step four is like, get yourself into their home or something. And then Jackie's like, hey, do you know how to fix washing machines? <laughs> yes, yeah, so he goes over to fix her uh, washing machine or some appliance, I guess. And uh, I guess just turns into a, a handyman for Jackie. Yeah, well, so for, he goes back to the meeting and Ursula's like, wow, you've done all four steps. Good job, Elton. And he's like, yeah. And then Kennedy's like, yes, now for step five. Step five, I want all of you to come up with a plan for how we're going to get to Rose through Jackie before next week. And like Kennedy's been assigning these people homework and they just went along with it in the first <laughs> meeting. Uh, at some point, Kennedy was going to hit, hit Elton and... Ursula was like, no, and and Kennedy's like, ah, most likely to fight back, yes, as predicted. And I'm like, so did, like, Kennedy, like, read up on all these people before coming to these meetings? <laughs> they seem pretty unremarkable, honestly. Especially Elton. I mean, I know, I guess he was just supposed to be, like, a, a regular, just ordinary person, but he's actually just more boring than someone in real life. <laughs> Just a real person is more interesting than, than Elton. Yeah, I don't disagree with you there. Anyway, now, yeah, Elton just becomes like a handyman for Jackie, and then Jackie starts making advances on Elton, <laughs> even though Elton's like probably half her age. 
I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. The the other funny scene in this comes about right now when Jackie offers Elton some wine and then purposely spills some on his shirt and makes it really obvious that she did so. <laughs> Yeah, so he goes to take off he, his shirt, and, and he's like, "Oh, are you? Uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, wipe it off. You know, no, no, no problem there." And she just dumps the rest of it on his shirt, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, guess I'm not just wiping that off." Okay, <laughs> so yeah, he takes his shirt off, and then he comes out and he's like, "Yeah, so night's about to get a lot hotter." And then Jackie's on the phone with Rose, and she's like, "Yeah, that was Rose. Looks like she's not coming back or whatever." And he's like, "Oh shoot." Guess the mood is ruined, but then he's like, "But then I realized what really matters." And then there's just Pizza. this, this mo- montage of Ursula set to the music of ELO. <laughs> so he goes and gets some pizzas. I imagine they spent their entire budget this season just on ELO licensing for this episode. Maybe they used ELO because it was only a band for like a year, and the licensing was cheap. I mean, Yellow is actually still around m- making music. Just they changed their name slightly because some of the original members left. So now it's called Jeff Lynn and the Electric Light Orchestra <laughs> instead of just Electric Light Orchestra. I thought they were only around for like one or two years. I mean, they were definitely around for like a pretty short time in the 80s. But then Jeff Lynn was like, I'm going to get the band back together. But then like half the members God. were like, I'm going to pass. Thanks. So he got like new members and it's different but under the same name because you want to get that sweet sweet previous fan base i guess kind of like how the lead singer of jefferson starship made a a side band just called starship (laughs) anyway so he's like yeah i guess i'm in love with ursula now so he's like i'm gonna go get some pizzas and we can just watch telly and that'll cheer you up. And then as he's coming back from the pizzas, like, really happily, Jackie's like, I found this picture of Rose in your pocket. So, like, clearly you don't care about me. And I, I don't know why Jackie jumps to such a big conclusion so quickly. Well, it is kind of weird that uh, this guy who you just met is carrying around a picture of your daughter in his pocket. I mean, yeah, but at the and- same time, it's implied to have been like a couple months since they've met and like jackie's been talking about her i don't think daughter. it was a couple months i think well, he's it was been, ma- at least there was like a just montage. a couple weeks there was like a montage of him coming back and fixing things all the time it's probably over a couple weeks i mean i guess but it's been like some non-trivial amount of time yeah i mean a couple weeks seems seems reasonable apparently jackie already realized that he was uh, trying to get info on the doctor somehow <laughs> and she goes off for a minute and then just drops this so i wonder why it's even included about how uh, everyone's always interested in you know the doctor and rose instead of her and uh, you know one they're way seemed, more interesting yeah that and this also just seems some like something jackie just wouldn't be concerned about yeah jackie's like never been concerned with her she's never been concerned with whether people like her or not yeah. really <laughs> but then they just kind of drop this idea immediately yeah Jackie so, sort of storms off uh, mad and then so Elton goes back to the meeting and they're like wow you really messed it up didn't you <laughs> and yeah he kind of did but then Elton's like we're just gonna we're leaving you uh, Victor Kennedy you've ruined all our meetings and we're done with you and then Kennedy's like hey Mr. Skinner can you like stay behind so and, uh so yeah so Skinner's dead <laughs> We've got to Everyone except for Ursula and Elton are dead. We completely forgot to mention Bridget. Just goes to show you how awful of a character she was. Well, her and like Mr. Skinner looked like they were gonna. Oh yeah, there was start... that romantic subplot between her and Skinner. Yeah, and Skinner's like really sad that he can't get in contact with her, and Kennedy's like, "Well, I can help." And so Skinner stays behind and gets absorbed. <laughs> There's that other funny sort of part where uh elton asks ursula out for chinese and then he's like you know what kennedy we're just all gonna storm out of here you know we're we're fed up with you and we're just gonna you know leave leave. not i don't know what it was but he makes some sort of some vaguely funny reference about how he and ursula are gonna go to chinese and then how skinner's just gonna leave as in like not go to chinese Anyway, they get outside. You had to be there. You had to be in the moment. They get outside, and, and Ursula's forgotten her phone, and 
Elton's like, so nice. much for the big exit. So then again, if she didn't forget her phone, I guess they wouldn't have caught the the absorb off. Yeah, but also Ursula wouldn't be a... Yeah, she seems pretty okay with it. So, uh, you know, no harm, no uh, foul. <laughs> so... They you... make do as... Uh, no, as... let's not. No, let's not. Let's not. Please. <laughs> they go back. And the absorb off is like, ha, 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 got... Well, <laughs> well for, first, the, first Kennedy tries to hide it in the worst way possible. <laughs> Um, cause he's transformed into the absorb off by now and he, he's holding up a newspaper to sort of hide it and he's like, uh, yeah, there, there's your phone on the desk, yeah, just, just take it and leave. But you can see his hands are like hooves. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> I think Ursula notices and she's like, wait a minute. And she's like gonna beat him with the cane and he's like, no, I'm just a poor defenseless absorb off And then you hear like Mr. Skinner's voice like, help, help, help. And then they're like, wait, and then they hear... You hear all of them, basically. Well, they hear Bliss, I think, and then they're like, but where's Bridget? And it's just a muffled voice, and then, great joke here. The Absorber Laugh, like, leans over, and it turns out that she's on his butt. And she said, you don't want to know. We should probably talk about the awful, just truly terrible design of the Absorber Laugh. Well, it was designed by a kid. That that doesn't excuse why the production team chose it. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of just, it almost looks like a worse version of the, uh, uh, can't believe I'm blanking on their name. The Slothene? Yeah, the Slothene family. Well, he does come from their twin planet. Okay, did he mention that in the episode? Yeah, actually. Huh. Yeah, Yeah, because when the Doctor and Rose meet the Absorber Life, Rose is like, looks a bit Slothene, doesn't he? And the Doctor's like, yeah, you don't come from Raxacalifactorius, do you? He's like, no, I come from their twin planet. The Doctor's like, there's a twin planet to R- Raxacalifactorius. The guy's like, yeah, Klom. <laughs> what? Did you miss this entire that. exchange? <laughs> I guess we're just completely zoned out by that point. <laughs> yeah, this was like an entire exchange they had, like when the Doctor and Rose met the Absorber off. Klom? Yeah. <laughs> All right, whatever. Anyway, it looks really terrible. He's got the, like a mohawk. Face, yeah, he does. The faces are really badly CG'd onto him, even... Really bad, even for Doctor Who. It's just, it just looks terrible. It just looks like it was just the lowest amount of effort and budget they possibly could have put into it. There's also a couple things that look like they were once faces, but not anymore. Like on his shoulder. Yeah, I guess that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, so the Absorber Loft grabs Ursula and like, one touch is all it takes. Once I touch you, you're just absorbed. There's no stopping it. It's like, wow, that's kind of... Super OP. <laughs> as long as you can avoid them, you're good. Ursula. I mean, yeah, you can say the same thing about the ambassadors of death, <laughs> yeah. but... But can't they also teleport? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, you just got to avoid them. And then... <laughs> yeah, but they're a lot harder to avoid. Anyway, Ursula tells Elton to run, which he does, and you get some some great, just amazingly shot scenes of the Absorbaloff running through the streets of... London. For, okay, so first the Absorbaloff makes a big deal about how it how it went underground and joined their group to avoid being seen by uh, humans and just stay out of sight, and then immediately just goes out and runs around the streets of London in broad daylight. <laughs> There's also like a weird. I don't even know what to call it, to be honest, but when Victor Kennedy shows up, he's like, don't touch me, I have eczema. And then (laughs) Elton's like, you mean eczema? He's like, no, eczema. (laughs) And they're like, keep bringing it back, like, every time he absorbs someone. I'm like, why do they keep bringing back eczema? I I think it was just supposed to be a a, a sort of funny, reoccurring line or joke. I don't know why mispronoun- mispronouncing eczema is supposed to be funny, but yeah. <laughs> eczema. <laughs> but yeah, so the Absorbaloff like runs around and he says he wants to absorb the doctor because he's got so much knowledge and wisdom and... and it, I, I, Just I, absorb I the know. face of Bo. <laughs> that too, but the face of Bo is millions of years in the future, so... Face of Bo seems a lot less mobile than the... Do- Actually, that's not true. The face of Bo is revealed to be able to teleport somehow. Yeah, he's, he's way more mobile than the Doctor, actually. Yeah, so then the Doctor and Rose show up. Could just absorb Barusa. <laughs> Great. <laughs> he was absorbed into that tomb. He seems, seems pretty uh, stationary. Anyway. 
yeah, Barusa kind of had the same fate as as Ursula. Come yeah, to <laughs> yeah. Come to think of it, maybe it was a subconscious decision on my part to to mention Barusa. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's all connected. Everything is connected. Anyway, they corner. Well, Elton actually, the observable off corner, corners Elton. But then the TARDIS shows up, and the observable off is like, yes, yes. And the doctor's like, how's it going? And the observable off is like, if you don't give yourself up to me, I'm just going to absorb Elton. This is after that whole exchange about Clom. Yeah, apparently the reason why the doctor and uh, Rose cornered them was actually to confront Elton about making Jackie mad. Yeah, and, and Elton's like, really? There's an alien here trying to kill me, and that's what you're going to go for? I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm kind of on Elton's side with this right now. Like, at least dispose of the alien first. It was slightly funny, though. Eh. Anyway, then the Observer Lost like, I know you. You're compassionate and kind. And the Doc's like, yeah, compassionate, but like, don't mistake that for kindness. Just, just, just do it. Just do it. And the Observer Lost is like, confused that this, this, now he doesn't know what to do. He's like, what? What? And I was like, just, just do it. Just do it. And he's like, but everybody else might have something to say about that. And then, like, I don't know how that tips Ursula off, but she decides that all of them should just pull at once. Should have tried that weeks ago, honestly. But yeah, that's how they defeat him. Well, I, actually, what how they really defeat him is that then he drops his cane and Elton picks it up and snaps it and apparently... Apparently, the Absorbilof needs, like, some sort of field to keep himself stable, and snapping the cane broke it, and he just... Oh. Yeah, I completely don't remember any of that. Yeah, it was really dumb and convoluted, because then the doc's like, the Absorber becomes the Absorbed, and Elton's like, what is he being absorbed oh, by? Oh, yeah, he got absorbed into the Earth. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, also <laughs> kind of dumb. And then, so the Doctor and Elton and Rose go, and they, like, sit on a step. And the doctor explains to Elton, we forgot to mention that throughout all of this, there's been like cutaways to Elton's vlog, but they're like not important and they're really intrusive and kind of sucks. So we just ignored them. (laughs) But yeah, the doctor explains to Elton why he was in his house, like when Elton was a kid. And apparently there was like a living shadow in Elton's house and the doctor went to go kill it to save Elton and his family, but he wasn't quick enough to save Elton's mom. He was only quick enough to save Elton. Yeah, I didn't get this this thing at the end with Elton's mom. I mean, it was just kind of out of left field. And, you know, I, I honestly forgot about the whole, you know, doctor was in his house and he forgot why thing. So just bringing it back here and revealing that it was his dead mom. Like, did he forget that his mom died? Yeah. Did it's he like repress imp- the memory? You know, what, what really happened here? Elton, like, implies that he repressed the memory because his mom died and he didn't want to remember that that, that night was his, the night his mom died. So... Does he think his mom's alive or like I what's what's up with that? You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> you just have to message Russell T about this, I guess. Yeah, we'll have to ask him uh, what his intentions were. And now we get probably the greatest scene uh, in Doctor Who history, honestly. Where he uses the sonic screwdriver to revive Ursula. <laughs> Yeah, the doctor, (laughs) Elton's like, yeah, the doctor said he could, wait, hang on, I wrote down the exact words that the doctor used, key into the absorption matrix to separate the lost victim. And the doctor's like, probably not enough power to completely separate them, but there's enough to get something back. back. So he calls for Rose to get a spade and you don't see anything. But then Elton at the very end goes on this tangent about how life, he thought life sucked, but... Turns out, you know, the world is a lot better than you thought it was, and there are good people in the world, and then... Well, it's a, he says it's a lot more interesting than he, he thought it was, because he always thought it was just, you know, get some dumb job, get married, have a kid, whatever, just live out your life boringly. hmm But apparently, no, it's actually just get married to a piece of concrete. Yeah, to a paving stone, because now Ursula's like, oh, don't get so sad, and then he, like, picks up this paving stone off his seat, and it's revealed that he has a love life with a paving stone. And that's the image that Russell T. leaves you on for this episode. Is trying to imagine how Elton and paving stone Ursula could possibly have a healthy love life. <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 sort of her face. Just That's all. It's, it's, it's her face like protruding from the stone. You know, that's all apparently the doctor was able to uh, get out. You kind of wonder why the doctor even bothered. It's kind of cruel. Yeah, yeah. No, if I was... Uh... That's something. That's what I immediately thought when I when I saw Ursula. Is like if I was in her position, I would just hate the doctor for forcing me to live as the rest of my life as 
as a paving stone and she's possibly immortal she's like well i'll never age she's also like i'm just okay with this and i'm like well how are you okay with this how are you okay with this in any way and how is elton okay with this yeah this is i mean i guess it was kind of just a light-hearted and you know supposed fun, to funny, be light funny ending but one thing that the reboot has always done uh, since Rose, even more so than the classic show, is uh, showing the ramifications of the Doctor's actions, both on like the people he encounters and on himself. Mm-hmm. And here they just kind of completely throw that idea out by just having everything be okay with this, uh, you know, this situation where <laughs> Ursula is a stone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's really, honestly, not really any way to justify this decision. This decision. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's kind of cruel to Elton and Ursula to make them have to to live out like like this. Yes. Russell T. could have easily just written it so the Doctor saves Ursula completely, and then it would have been okay. Or he could have just written it so that the Doctor couldn't save Ursula at all, but instead he went for this weird, like, compromise where, like, there's still consequences in the story, but, like, kind of not. Because, I mean, Mr. Skinner and Bridget and Bliss are still dead. <laughs> Like, it sucks to be them. (laughs) Yeah. We forgot to mention that, like, Elton comes up with the name Absorbilof, and and Absorbilof, like, didn't have a name before that. It's a name for its own kind. (laughs) That's another questionable decision (laughs) that's, like, in this story. Yeah, you know, I don't know if this is uh, true or not, but this kind of seems like something that. You know, maybe Russell T. would have written in, like, middle school or something and was brought back. It's like, well, we need a filler episode for series two, so uh, how about this? I mean, it really does feel like Russell T. didn't know what to write for this story and was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, I need to fill the spot. I gotta, gotta think of something. He just wrote it all in, like, an hour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, it feels like it steals a lot of concepts from Russell T.'s, like, previous stories. Like, the whole website conspiracy thing is, like, straight out of Rose with, like, Craig... <laughs> so I don't know yeah. I actually remember now how Victor Kennedy got Rose's picture it was in the Torchwood files but yeah. Victor Kennedy also mentions that a lot of the information on Rose was erased by something called the bad wolf virus Huh? but he was able that. to save the picture apparently the story actually contains references to all four of Russell T's overarching plot lines because Victor Kennedy mentions Torchwood, obviously, and he mentions the Bad Wolf virus, but he also apparently mentions Mr. Saxon, which I com- I completely didn't catch that reference at all. But Mr. Saxon is the overarching plotline for next season. And then apparently Klom is one of the missing planets, which is the overarching plotline of two seasons from now. So, All right. Just, I mean, I think that was kind of interesting. That Russell T somehow worked in references to all four of his overarching plotlines, including two which haven't happened yet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, kind of interesting. Sort of doesn't really make the episode any better. No, it contributes nothing to the quality of the story. (laughs) Sort of like how there are a couple actually really funny bits in this episode, like I mentioned. Actually more funny than Doctor Who is usually. But also just doesn't really make the episode any better. Yeah. Yeah. Just pretty bad episode yeah this is the worst of the reboot i'm gonna say you know of the uh i think almost 20 or about 20 episodes of the reboot that i've watched so far this is the worst yeah that's a pretty commonly held opinion that it's probably like right at the bottom for the reboot and i pretty much agree yeah this story kind of sucks i actually don't even remember watching this the first time either i just blocked it out of my memory completely (laughs) or i just completely skipped it the first time i watched these episodes but (laughs) Yeah, the story, wow. Just, I mean, you know, like I said earlier, I'll give it credit for trying something interesting and, like, trying to show the Doctor's adventures from, like, the point of view of a bystander. But I like, won't, because it ha- wasn't even that interesting. Well, I think it could be interesting if they picked, like, Anyone an interesting character. Anyone Like, a, ca- a, a character who actually had a character, or if they picked someone who, like, actually mattered to the story. <laughs> Or maybe someone who, I don't know, maybe would become a companion at the end and would have, you know, more of a backstory as we see their everyday life for a full episode. Or maybe if they just actually showed, like, the entirety of one of the Doctor's adventures from the point of view of a bystander instead of making the bystander this weird conspiracy nut and trying to hunt down the Doctor. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. That's almost what Rose was, though. 
Almost. Almost, but not quite. Anyway, yeah, bad story, bad episode. Uh, let's try and move on to next week when we watch Fear Her, another episode considered one of the worst of the reboot. Yeah, I was going to say the preview makes the next episode look, you know, not much better than this one. <laughs> Also, also seemed like sort of a budget episode like this one. Well, so this one was designed to be like one of those Dr. Light episodes because they were like, we can film more episodes a season if we can have one yeah. episode where we don't have the Doctor in yeah. it. Which they kind of like slightly attempted last season with The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. And that's why, and apparently filming wise, it was a great success, which is why they continue to do it for the next two seasons anyway. Yeah. Anyway, you can email us at the doctor decadentvegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on love and monsters. You can find us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. All that's trust your doctor. Be sure to leave a rating if you like the show, and be sure to check out our Blake Seven podcast, Zenith, also found at all those other locations I just mentioned. Check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor, like us on Facebook, also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast, and follow us on Twitter. And next time we're watching Fear Her. But until then, the end.